Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. So my plan for this week's episode was to interview some people that have made major changes in their lives, both professionally and personally, and to hear their views on personal success. However, that plan was interrupted on May 14th when my hometown of Buffalo, New York, was hit with something I have never personally experienced in my lifetime. I was born and raised here and have lived here most of my life. A racially targeted mass shooting occurred at a local supermarket in a predominantly black neighborhood. An armed 18-year-old white male planned the murders and then he drove three and a half hours from his home to Buffalo. He shot 13 people and he killed 10. All 10 were black. To add insult to injury, it has come out that he wrote 100 pages outlining and plotting his murderous plan to kill black people. He obviously succeeded in executing that plan. There are so many angles I can think of to approach this tragedy from, but strangely enough, I want to talk about success. I know this is an extreme and heartbreaking example to glean from, and some might even say inappropriate, but if you'll hear me out, I think you'll get something good out of today's talk, because I think there is a takeaway lesson about success here. As mentioned before, the, the, the white male, uh, whose first name is Peyton, plotted and wrote down his plan. This is similar to vision boards that are so popular today and that so many create when they're trying to accomplish something or want to reach a goal. They start by plotting their, you know, their, their steps and, and writing down their plan. Peyton then did the work of a clan by driving three and a half hours to Buffalo with a loaded weapon and killing the people that he targeted. How many times do we tell ourselves or hear that our vision or plan must have actionable steps? You might be wondering at this point, where am I going with this? The point is, in all of his planning, evil as it was, he did not think or care about how his actions would impact other people. The lives that mean so much to so many that were just taken away from people who loved them or who depended upon them. The destinies that were cut short. The unreached potential that died with those victims. My second point is he will pay a negative and a hefty price for his actions, as he should, even though he succeeded in reaching his goal. Because the problem wasn't the planning, the writing, or the executing. It was the goal. The goal was to kill people. It was to cause harm to innocent people. Again, this is an extreme example, I know, but this is what I, my community, are thinking about and trying to make sense of right now, so I, I need you to please bear with me. I think if we told the whole truth, the American society right now is very much purporting selfishness, what I want at any cost, me, myself, and I, selfies, flexing success, especially on social media. Do you, you hear do you, and I'm doing me and the cancel culture. All of these things encourage self-centeredness without any thought or care about how our actions impact other people. Correction or constructive criticism has become synonymous with hating. You know, people are caught haters and haters are blocked or canceled. So the, you know, the spiral of self-centeredness is allowed to continue without checks or balances. So many TV shows today portray parents who are supposed to be authoritative figures and guiding figures in children's lives as stupid and clueless. Think about how often we're encouraged to execute our vision without thought as to who might suffer if we succeed or whose toes we have to step on to reach our goal. I'm wondering what the world would be like if we shifted our viewpoint just a little by including, you know, consciousness and awareness of how what we do what we plan and what we think affects others in our personal and professional lives. Include ethics in our thoughts and in our success plans. 
You know, doctors, and, and I believe nurses as well, have a code of ethics called the, uh, I think it's called the Hippocratic Oath. And it talks about, you know, in a nutshell, doing no harm. That means that, you know, they vow to practice with the intent to do no harm to the patients they serve. Every suggestion, every prescription, every order is supposed to be for the good of the patient to heal and not to hurt. What if we, when we created our vision boards or mapped out our, you know, success plans, started with the thought to do no harm? Even if your intent was never to hurt anyone, imagine raising your consciousness in this area. It can almost assure that no harm is done, you know, even unintentionally. What if our plans weren't only about us succeeding, but about others' success as well? What if we didn't think of ourselves as an isolated island, but rather a part of a larger community, interconnected, you know, called America or the world or the planet? I know the mass shooting in Buffalo is about other things, and I am in no way comparing people to a mass murderer. And I understand this issue will not necessarily be resolved in one episode, you know, with one conversation or among a few like-minded people. However, I do know charity begins at home and communities are made up of individual people. And selfishness at age 18 and beyond is a learned behavior. I also know behavior can change, but it has to start in our hearts and our minds. There's a quote that you must learn a new way to think before you can master a new way to be. I think we, especially in America, need to perhaps view success a little differently. Ask yourself, what are you doing for someone else? Do your plans or dreams center around you, or do your plans include helping other people as well? Are you making sure others succeed while you're doing so? Martin Luther King has a quote. It's it's actually my favorite quote of his, and it's life's most persistent question is what are you doing for others? There's another quote. Service is the rent you pay for room on this earth. I talked last week about using your life and your purpose to make a positive difference in the lives of others. Because this is how I define success. So I ask myself today, and I ask you to ask yourself, are you just taking up space? Or are you making a lasting impact in the lives of the people that you influence? There's a scripture that says, look to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. There's another scripture in Philippians that says, don't do anything for selfish reasons, but consider others as more significant than yourselves. Now, I realize the ills of the world, including all of the horrible isms, racism, ageism, sexism, classism, and so on, will not be solved overnight. But I do wonder if we maybe can start the work of eradicating isms by changing how we think and feel because our actions follow our thoughts and feelings. Next week, I hope to bring to you the interviews I promised uh, to discuss personal success. Right now, I can only reflect on what we can glean from the tragedy that happened in Buffalo, New York on May 14th and so many similar tragedies that have happened and that continue to happen in America. Thank you for listening to my heart on this matter. I hope that today you'll walk away inspired to do better, to be better, to think better, to plan better, and to act better. Not just better than a mass murderer, but better than who you were yesterday. I hope tomorrow you'll be better than who you were today. Because as the late Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates, released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.